Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel That Model Railway Guy and welcome to another Hornby Loco review. As you may know if you've been following my channel for a while I'm a big fan of the Hornby W4 packet and I'm surprised I've never gotten round to reviewing it before now but today all that changes. These were incredibly popular models when they were first released a few years ago and they really kick-started the whole genre of small industrial loco so let's find out why they're so popular. The first thing I have to mention is the metal die cast body. Not only does it add a lot of weight to this very small loco, but it also gives it a feel of quality. Sometimes Hornby engines can feel a bit delicate, but the W4 packet feels both sturdy and high quality at the same time. My version is one of the earlier ones that was released, and the decoration is fairly simple on it, but it's still very well applied. As you can see, we have the number plate on the side of the loco, as well as a builder's plate on the side of the cab. The cab also has this wonderful lining all around it too, which is very nicely printed. Under the saddle tank we also have this very finely detailed piping. The configuration of the pipes varies on the different models Hornby have produced, but certainly on this one it's very well done indeed. Taking a look at the buffers now, and you'll notice that these are not sprung. As I've said in the past, that seems to be Hornby's protocol with their smaller locos, but they are metal here and they do look good, so to be honest, in my opinion, it's not really much of an issue. Meanwhile, the front profile of the W4 has that distinctive pecket look, and we also have the smoke box dart here too, which is nicely picked out in silver. There's also additional lining over the front of the smoke box too, which I personally really like, and once again, this is printed incredibly well. If I had to find a fault with the pecket, it would be the whistle. It's made of plastic, and while that's not always a bad thing, it's very exposed up there on top of the cab. With it being such a fine moulding, it's very prone to getting bent or breaking off entirely, which isn't great. That said, Hornby did address this on the B2 Pecket, which does have a metal whistle on top of the cab, as you can see here. And I've heard rumours that the newer W4s do now have metal whistles, though I can't confirm that myself since, as I mentioned earlier, mine is one of the earlier ones. The back of the loco is also very nice, and this is one of those locos that I enjoy running cab first, because it does look good from almost every angle. If you look closely too, you can also see the little notch on the back, which will allow the brake handle to spin in the cab, so it's good that Hornby have paid attention to the detail there. Speaking of the cab, it's very well done indeed, with lots of detailing and pipe work all picked out in appropriate colours. I believe there are now open cabbed versions of the Pecket too, which allow you to see inside more easily, so if you're a fan of cab detail, you might want to look into getting one of those. So that's the detail on the Pecket, and it really is a charming little engine. But the story doesn't stop there, because despite this being a tiny loco, they are renowned for being incredible runners, as I'll demonstrate now. So I'm slowly turning up the controller, and you can just see the wheels starting to move. The slow speed is actually really impressive, and I have a lot of confidence in this loco too. Despite the short wheelbase, it doesn't tend to stall or cut out very often, so I can run it pretty much however I want without having to worry about it. Going a bit faster now, and you can see it's a good, smooth, and consistent runner. It's also very quiet too, I mean there's barely any motor noise, and it's really just the sound of the wheels turning on the rolling road. And then even at these faster speeds, the packet still feels nice and solid. Even though in reality it would never run this fast, it doesn't feel like the model's going to break if I run it like this. So with the loco stop, let's show you how it does in reverse. And it's pretty much the same story, really. Again, the slow speed is good, very smooth, consistent running. And I have to admit, the rods on the wheels and the cylinders look great when they're in motion. So we know the Pecket performs well on the rolling road, but this is a loco that was intended for shunting, so how well does it do on an actual layout? Well, let's get it down onto Pickwick Yard and see how well it does.
The W4 packet really does look at home here, and it's easy to see why this loco was the inspiration for so many micro layouts to be built. Not only is it small and good looking, but it also runs really well over pretty much anything you throw at it. Take my layout for example. There's three very old insel frog points back to back on it with large plastic frogs, and the pecket handles them with ease. Normally I'd say it's surprising for a loco with such a small wheelbase, but then remember we saw the same thing with the Rustin 48 DS too. Whatever you think of Hornby, you have to admit they've done an incredible job on getting their small locos to run really well over all kinds of track. And that really is why the Peckets have been so popular, because not only do they look good, but they have the performance to match. All in all, the W4 Peckett is a really charming loco, and it's hard not to love it. They've certainly been popular, so it doesn't look like Hornby will stop making them anytime soon, and if previous years are anything to go by, small industrial locos are here to stay. Anyway, that's it for this time guys, if you haven't already please do subscribe, hit the bell icon and don't forget to leave a comment down below letting me know what you think of the packet. In the meantime though, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!